for our first tech talk of the day. Please welcome to the stage Nadim El Manawi, co founder and CEO at Arise Travel. Nadim will be taking questions from the audience following his presentation. So hello everyone. So as Michael said, uh, if you think of anything while I talk, please remember your questions and I'll be able to answer a few at the end. So today I'm here to explain how distributed ledger technology can help hotels share data and transact with their hotels, or with their partners, excuse me, in a more efficient, direct, and trustworthy way. So if we look at hotel distribution today, we've got hotels on one side, companies selling their rooms on the other, and between them, many interconnected intermediaries that each have their own APIs, data formats, and they all cache hotel data locally. Because you see, current distribution technology was developed at a time when data caching was an acceptable solution to protect hotel systems from OTAs having to return results quickly when people were searching online. But over time, this just created a mess, because today, many of these local cache of hotel data get out of sync throughout the chain. Like a very common example of that is when you go on a meta search, and then once you reach the actual booking site, ta-da, surprise, the price has nothing to do with what you were shown on the meta search at first. I mean, this happens to me all the time. I hate it. And also, unfortunately, this cache-based model removed hotel visibility and control over where their data actually goes as soon as it leaves their system, making it super easy for third parties to access discount rates. Um, let's see here. So, how does, uh, oh yeah, and actually, I mean, as I'm sure you guys know, so this clearly hurts hotels, because not only you know, those, do these intermediaries charge them high fees and markups, you know, some of them are now causing hotels to lose on direct booking revenue, because you know, guests just lose the confidence that they'll find always the best available rate on the hotelsbrand.com site. So how does distributed ledger technology improve all of this and help hotels regain control over their distribution? So let's first quickly make sure that everybody knows what a ledger is. It's an append-only record that keeps track of pieces of information. It's immutable, meaning entries can be changed or deleted. It's auditable, as it keeps track of the history of every change, as well as the identity of the party making that change. And it's transparent, as anyone who is given access to the ledger you know, can view and validate that each entry is correct. And so a distributed ledger has the same properties but is made up of geographically distributed copies. So when a change is pushed to one copy of the ledger, that change is then sent to all other copies that sync a couple seconds later. So it's like a database and a network combined, where all connected parties can view and update the same shared record at the same time. And there is no API integrations needed anymore, no system-to-system -system mapping needed anymore, and no more stale cache data. So you know, there's hope that I enjoy using Metasearch again in the future. And so all types of hotel data can be stored and transmitted on a distributed ledger. So availability, rates, content, restrictions, commission amounts, and so forth. And so then any change pushed by a hotel or a demand partner then automatically syncs with everyone. So like a very simple example could be if a booking is made on an OTA, that booking is first pushed to that OTA's local copy of the ledger, and then all other copies sync three seconds later. Or another example, let's say if a hotel has a new picture of their lobby or of whatever room type, they can just push that change and then all connected parties get updated automatically three seconds later. And so an important characteristic of distributed ledger technology is that it uses an edge-based computing model, which distributes the query load to connected partners, allowing them to scale their own resources as needed to serve their customers without affecting the rest of the network. And so this model allows for lower latency and better privacy and security because all data doesn't need to flow anymore through a central set of servers. And edge-based computing is also actually going to help hotels prevent the onward distribution of their data because this technology now makes certain things possible that weren't before that are going to prevent non-contracted OTAs from being able to push reservations back in with rates that they were not even supposed to have access to in the first place. And so what's great with DLT, or distributed ledger technology, um, 
is that we can now make sure also that all connected parties use the same logic and have the same capabilities when it comes to turning different availability and rate combination into a sellable product, which is great because this is going to speed up the pace of innovation because there won't be any reliance anymore on intermediaries having to update their tech and APIs in order to be able to deploy new functionality or features to market. So it's really going to reduce distribution network upgrades from years to weeks, like really. Like, if I think of an example, imagine if, let's say, attribute-based pricing becomes a thing. And I mean real attribute-based pricing, not just you know, one or two room type stuff that we've been reading about lately. So if this does become a thing, imagine how long it's going to take for intermediaries to update their tech for them to be able to handle that. Like, it's going to take forever. Like, you guys know we'll still be talking in five years. Whereas here, you push one update to the network, and all connected parties now have it without them actually having to do anything. And so thanks to DLT, we now have a single auditable source of truth for each booking that both hotels and point-of-sale partners can trust at all time. And so what this does is that it now makes it possible to automate certain business processes, such as commission payments and payouts. So as I'm sure many of you know, like the current fragmentation of data makes the current process of commission reconciliation you know, highly inefficient and expensive. But now that we have a trusted shared record that contains you know, up-to-date booking information with the attached commissions and the rules attached, this can now be automated. And this automation is now going to allow hotels to work with point-of-sale partners in a much more direct and dynamic way. Hotels can now decide how much they're willing to pay and send that along with their ARI data, availability and rate. And so commissions can vary you know, per channel, date, room type, rate, and so forth. So very similar to what hotels do today you know, when they yield their rates, they can now do the same with their commissions. And so no, you know, they don't need any more to like, close out channels completely once they hit a certain level of occupancy or during high demand periods, just adjust you know, accordingly the commissions. And then point-of-sale partners can then decide you know, what inventory to show you know, to their customers based on potential earnings. So really, this technology allows for the creation of a true marketplace where companies that want to sell hotel rooms can transact directly with hotels and get paid automatically without even having to talk to them ever if they don't want to or have to go through all the process that would be required today if they were to want to transact directly with the hotels, which you know, very few companies today can do because, again, too many steps, it's a nightmare process which explains why most travel companies not called Booking and Expedia you know, connect with a combination of affiliate networks, wholesalers, GDS, aggregators, and so forth. And so this technology is available to hotels starting from now because it can connect to existing solutions they already use to manage their distribution, so mainly their CRS and channel manager. And same thing goes for point-of-sale partners who can connect to it you know, using standard API messaging formats that they already use today. And so DLT is obviously not just a great fit for the travel industry. There are many other use cases uh, in other verticals and industries, some already at a very large scale, seeing great success, some, some are like in shipping companies, uh, actually Walmart seeing amazing results already with it. And then there are many, of course, applications around payments. Uh, and I'm sure you'll see more and more, actually, also application of that tech as you know, time goes along. But coming back to travel, and hotels here in this case more specifically, uh, you know, hotels being able to regain control over their distribution really sounded or appeared like a daunting task up until recently, but not anymore. They now have a technology that they can incrementally roll out without you know, changing much or even at all uh, how they currently do things and manage their distribution that over time is really going to help them regain total control and visibility over their distribution and that will greatly benefit them and the partners that they want to do business with. So exciting times ahead, folks. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes for questions. <laughs> questions, questions for Nadim on distributed ledger technology? One up front. Is um, the solution um, is actually is, is it the solution against OTA uh, superpowers? 
to go after the OTAs? Yeah. Uh, not the OTAs, the customer-facing side, uh, but all those companies that today rely on their affiliate network to be able to access you know, availability and rates of the hotels and get paid automatically, even though it's just a rev share. Uh, this is the part that obviously we're hoping to take away. So really, where we sit in, in, the, in, the, in the chain is like you've got the PMS, CRS channel managers. This we're not disrupting. But once the data leaves and onward up to the point of sale is where we really fit in. So think about affiliate network, wholesalers, GDS. So all the ones that once you can bring basically better plumbing or better effic efficiency connecting supply and demand, then what's their point? You know, what's the added value they bring here? So that's where we fit in, to answer your question. But otherwise, the OTA, the customer-facing side, like, no, uh, like, that's not what we're going after. Hopefully, we're going to make it easier for other companies now to be able to earn more revenue and start, you know, transacting with hotels more. So hopefully, it's going to challenge the current position and duopoly that Expedia and Booking have. But again, that's up to other companies to make their life harder on them. Yeah. Another question? Hi. For the data not being changeable or deletable, uh, what are your view on GDPR? Right, so the way GDPR works, because, uh, yeah, to your point, uh, you know, distributed ledger, like, things are immutable, so you can't change this, so what if the guest wants to delete their information? So the way we do this is we basically store a lot of personal information outside, out of chain, and then it's just like a key, like a hash, basically, that is stored on chain. So once you basically just delete the data outside the network, it's just a key that points to nothing. So that's how we are able to stay basically GDPR compliant, which is totally fine, yeah. Other, Other questions? questions? I had one. Yep. I was wondering, how do you prevent uh, non-contracted OTAs from selling wholesale rates in the system? Yep. Good question. Um, so, as I mentioned, everything has been optimized for caching today, meaning that you have long-term identifiers for room types and rates. So, example, if you have a hotel and you work with a wholesaler, you send it the rate, they cash it, then they pass it along to God knows who, right, and other OTAs. They cash it, they make a booking, they push it back in. Again, room type rates, it matches, it's always the same identifiers. So it's super easy for anyone right now to access rates and push reservations back in. With distributed ledger technology, we can now actually get rid of those long-term identifiers. So meaning, let's say a wholesaler sends this to a non-contracted OTA that has nothing to do with the network. When they'll try to push the reservations back in, it's not going to match with anything. So the reservations will be declined. So basically, the incentives are just gone for these non-contracted OTAs to try to trick the system, because they'll have to cancel all the bookings made on their, you know, on their whatever app or, or website. So being able, again, to completely uh, get rid of those long-term identifiers uh, is basically going to take away the incentives for wholesalers to try to, you know, not respect their contract, I, I want to say. <laughs> Thank you, Nadim. Thank you.